Hi, Antoinette here. So parts six and seven arrived the very next day after I filmed parts four and five. And I did get some good feedback and some messages. So thank you all for reaching out and letting me know what you think. Um, and therefore I have decided to go ahead and show you what came in the post. Um, some of you have asked me about things that weren't included. Now in parts four and five, there was meant to be, or going to be, um, a free journal and we got a little letter apologising because due to things that are out of the company's control and productions of items as we know with decks especially, um, there's a delay in postage around the world so shipping was becoming an issue and they were hoping to have these ready for these issues, six and seven. Sadly, we had another letter that came with this one, um, just apologising that they still haven't managed to get them through and hopefully they'll come along with um, our next two issues, eight and nine. So next month, hopefully um, that journal will be in the post. At the end of the day, it's a free gift, so I'm not overly upset, if that makes sense. If I get it, it's a bonus. Um, but yeah, I was a little disappointed to see it hadn't come through, but we did get other things in the pack this week. So, um, you know, they kind of made up for it a little bit. What happened? So it, this came in a, just in a um, envelope and we got some freebies. So we were given some crystals in this one. And um, these are gorgeous. So let's see if I can show you. believe this is just a quartz it has an opal light type quality to it but I think it is just a um, kind of clear quartz with a rainbow shadow on it just maybe from the way it's been polished um, but it's got a lovely it had, has a nice feel to it I've got a beautiful piece of labradorite with wonderful flash sorry my camera not focusing properly so you can't see it's not picking up but it's got some um there's some there so it's got quite a bit of um flash in it so and for anyone that doesn't know i do like a piece of labradorite i just uh it's this electric blues and these sunshine colors i have problems saying no to i believe this is aventurine so a nice green big piece this one looks like some standard rose quartz. Oh, I'm sorry. And then we have a piece of um, amethyst. It does have some nice banding to it. And it's a nice dark piece. It's almost like a dog tooth um, amethyst for those familiar, but it may just be the way it's been cut and tumbled. But yeah, so we got those, which I think was really nice. I wasn't expecting quite so many crystals um, and it's very rare you get labradorite included in things so that was a really nice touch so well done low scarabeo also got another pouch with the um, empress on the front so I've got another tarot pouch and two more cards go with my collection of the Golden Art Nouveau tarot. So the collection's starting to build, we're into the twos. All those over there. And the tuck box came because this deck comes with the Harmonious Tarot. So what I haven't shown you previously, or not really concentrated on so much, they come so what you get is part, so this part would come with, if you're buying in the shops, would come with part six. So you get um, half a deck. So you get the majors plus some of the minors. And then you get the other half with the other um, edition when you buy them. So that's why they come separately. And in a way, it would never make sense to give you an entire deck with one edition because financially it's just not even viable for the company. So... 
the way I'm seeing this now is the deck comes and the, um, the deck is cheaper than buying it myself from Los Scarabeo and getting it across to me. And then the lovely magazines are kind of like extra freebies. So take it out of this. It's got gorgeous backs. So three of pentacles starts at the four of pentacles goes through to the swords let me just unstick this okay. starting with the full so just drop that in there a minute to keep it protected so that's the deck Let's take a look at what comes in the um, editions. So I think we're in frame. So you have your contents, nothing different there. Introduction to intuitive reading. There are little um, kind of exercises within the magazines as you go through. And here's one here. So we'll have one about sparking your intuition and it's got a little explanation about what to do and how to kind of spark your intuition. So I actually quite like that. And this is where I think these little snippets within the magazine. So although for the people who are worried about these magazines being too basic for advanced readers, I think these bits are where you're going to get, um, you know, your own personal testing if that's the right word I can't think of the word I'm looking for but you know this is where for me I'm going to get the um, little gems and nuggets out of this um, whereas for those who are learning this basic page here and all the information on it is going to be more than enough for them so actually as a mid-advanced reader I like these little um, exercises it just gets you going again gets you working in different ways and it's nice to have those suggestions and pushes and prompts. So I like that. And I know many of you, we're all different. So it may not always be. That doesn't mean that's going to make it OK for everyone. But that's just now something that I am having had a couple of them come through in the post. That's something I'm starting to notice. I hadn't noticed it in the previous, but now I'm actually having sat down with them a bit more. I'm noticing that. So this is about the Hierophant. So we've got the standard Hierophant with the study deck. And then I love the bit where it gives you thematics and meaning. So this is helping the beginners to advance more with how they see the card and seeing the card outside of the standard white book reading. So I like the way it makes you think about them um, for different uh, areas of your life. And uh, yeah, so I like that quite a lot. And this um, I've noticed now, so what the card says so this is what the Hierophant would communicate to you if he were able to express himself in words. And then there's like a conversation almost with you. Um, and I'm finding those quite amusing. Uh, Patiski does this. He has a book where he does this, Conversations with the Cards. Um, but he does much like much more scripted conversation. Um, and it's just, it is quite good fun. And I'm also rather enjoying seeing other depictions of the card. So these are all forms of Hierophant in different decks and what this also does is this reminds you that not every Hierophant has the same bulk standard meaning so for each one so this is from the Low Scarabeo Tarot and um, this guy represents spirituality and authority whereas this one from the Universal Fantasy Tarot which is starting to grow on me it's not a deck I ever thought I would really enjoy but having seen it throughout the bottoms of these I'm actually quite intrigued with this deck and he means dogmatism from the Thelema Tarot which came with episodes four and five our Hierophant here um, is about learning and then we have the Tarot of the Pagan Cats and this one's um, storytelling and teaching and you see them sat quite intently listening and you can see all the kind of magic in the air which is where I get the storytelling from and you've also got the books and of course it says it there as well but when you look into the card that makes a lot more sense we have the Pre-Raphaelite Tarot, which comes with episodes 10 and 11 at the moment. Um, and our Hierophant here is more master. So um, there is a bit more formality to him in this card, this deck. 
With the pagan tarot, it can represent religious intolerance. Um, so, you know, burning the books, burning knowledge. Um, but that would all link into, I suppose, the pagan tarot and what it represents as well. And I have to say, this is the other deck I'm really quite liking the look of, is the Shaman Tarot, and this one's Spiritual Power. Now, if this deck doesn't come within this um, subscription, this deck I'm buying, most definitely. Out of all of these, this deck is coming home. Um, but I just need to hang on and be patient in case it does turn up in one of these towards the end of the subscription. So I don't want to end up with multiple decks of these. And then we have the Harmonious Tarot, which arrived today, and our um, Hierophant is kind of representing the right balance of things. We have the deck library for the um, Harmonious Tarot, and here we have a little run-through of the cards, telling you what they all mean, because of course the cards don't come with little white books, so this is effectively your little white book for that. I'm just going through the Major Arcana, and then we have the Minor Arcana here. And just for instance, if we go through the eights, so we have um, Eight of Cups, Delusion, Loss, Sense of Uncertainty, Unknown Future. We have the Eight of Pentacles, Work, Ability, Creativity and Manual Skill. The Eight of Wands, Ideas, Thoughts, Verbal and Written Communications and Surprise. And then we have the Eight of Swords, Bad News, Solitude, Pain, Imprisonment and Abandonment. I don't have the cards to hand to um, look through with those, but that gives you an idea of, for those familiar, how the meanings change slightly with the nuances of the deck. And then we have tarot tip. When using the harmonious tarot in a reading, pay special attention to the cards that gave you a feeling of harmony or balance as you turn them over. They may prove to be significant. So it's a deck that's telling you to work with your feeling as well when you're working with it. So that's a nice, interesting thing. And then we have um, for experts, and there's an expert tip there. Experienced readers can gain great value from working with the Harmonious deck, particularly suitable for readings that use techniques based on the relationships between the elements in the arcana. So um, again, for those of you who are more advanced, there's another way of incorporating how you work with the tarot. And what I am coming to love about this whole subscription now are the spreads. There's different spreads in each magazine, and I like that. So this one is a universal vision, and it's one that I'm going to sit down and do, quite honestly. And that's one of the things that I'm kind of enjoying. So I said in the last video, sit down with a cup of tea and have some fun. So a cup of tea ready, and I'm going to have some fun. And this is what I plan to do later. And for beginners, there's an example reading of this reading here. And then you have the meanings on the back. And again, I like the way they do this for um, beginners. So it's giving you the card and the meaning. Then you've got your keywords that link in with the basic meanings or essential meanings. And then you've got something more there about that card. And I think that's really good for those of you that are unsure how to read the cards. We have the visual reference to the harmonious tarot there. And more for our glossary, as you all know, big fan of the glossary. Let's have a look here. Let's take a word. Purple. Colour often used in tarot to communicate themes of royalty, calm, opulence, wealth and intuition. And some of you are probably saying, and psychic. There's a, there's a separate bit there for psychic. So, yeah. So there we have episode six. So it tells us about seven and um, eight. We have a Marseille. And that will be my first actual true coloured Marseille coming into my collection. So exciting things ahead moving on to subscription seven can i remember what the word is i'm meant to use for this so i do apologize i swap and change in between what i call it's my first ever magazine subscription in my life i think of a collector's item um so yes here we have reading the tarot and balancing your spread and a little bit more like looking into numerology here. Eights signal the need to make an effort. Um, going back to the eights that we just read about in the other edition. And um, eights also like obstacles, perseverance for me. So here we have a sneaky peek at the Arcanum Tarot. 
And this is one I'm quite interested in getting. I'm not sure if this is a very pippy deck or not, but um, I like the dark, moody colours in there, which won't be too much of a surprise for anyone who's seen my um, flip-throughs of decks and noticed that there is a kind of darker theme to them. Um, I just like gothic looking stuff, although my house is white and bright. <laughs> and again, so we have the thematics. Um, so we're talking about the lovers here, weren't we? Um, we have what the card says and then we have what the lovers would say to you. Card reversal there. And a little suggestion, further exploration. Read up on Romeo and Juliet, Adam and Eve, Vice and Virtue and Cupid and Psyche or to give you more insight into what the lovers mean and how it relates um, to other aspects. And then down here we have, so there's the Universal Fantasy Tarot again, like I said, growing on me. Um, I'm quite loving the images. It reminds me a lot of the Shadowlands actually, the Shadowlands Tarot, which I don't own. It's another deck I don't own, but um, admire from afar. And I like the fact that I can admire it from afar. Um, it makes me feel empowered in myself. And then we have the Shaman Tarot. So, yeah, we have the Pre-Raphaelite Tarot. Um, I already know that's not a style that I particularly like because I'm not really, a, I don't need naked bodies and fancy artwork like that in my decks, but it'll be one for the collection. Um, um, the Thelema Tarot there, which we've already got. The manga tarot, again, I'm not sure how I feel about the manga tarot, but we shall see if it grows on me as I see more decks or cards throughout the bottoms. And we have the elemental key spread, this this one in um, episode seven. So again, another great spread for trying out. So this asks the querent to rank four aspects of his or her life in order to identify problems and opportunities. I think this is why I found this one amusing when I had a quick flick through last night. So we take a look at career, spirituality, wisdom, wealth, and um, the fifth one being the elemental key, which is a major arcana card from what I can work out. The major arcana card here in number five represents an important force in the querent's life. It should not be interpreted traditionally, but in terms of its elements. So that takes you back to that elements section where it asks you about elements and feelings and things. And it also does, just to give you a little key, the elements are there as well to help you out. Um, and interestingly, in this deck, the fool and the world in the Major Arcana are neutral. So, and then you've got a practice spread there for you to help you out. And again, the meanings um, with the kind of reflections section here with what we have learnt with, within that spread. The visual reference um, and rituals and preparations. So I'm hoping that this answers some of those things. So it's got some basic cleansing in here that I can see instantly. Types of rituals, so new deck consecration, basic cleansing ritual, full moon or sunlight cleanse. Um, I use both of those on my decks white cloth to cleanse your decks, to keep your deck in, um, crystal cleansing, as you see here, and you've got a bag of crystals that you can use with your decks, sleeping, so you can sleep with the decks under your pillow, um, not something I do, uh, I think I've done it once in my lifetime, um, not something I do regularly at all, and cleansing your cards, cleaning your cards, so from time to time, it's necessary obviously because they build up um, energies and powers, or they can stop reading for you so you have to give them a little cleanse and clean out to reset the energies and then we have like the smoke cleansing um here it's being referred to as smudging which is a centuries old cleansing uh, ritual um, what have we got here so this form of cleansing is a four and a half thousand year old ritual whether you burn white sage, cedar, or another herb, this practice can be used to purify a tarot deck in a variety of ways. So smoke cleansing the deck, it's cleansing the cards, preparing them for divination, getting rid of that mass produced factory smell. Yeah, I, but I like that smell. I don't know about anyone else. I quite like that smell of ink that comes off them. <laughs> um, obviously, you just wanna be careful when you're doing that. If you are using smoke cleansing rituals, um, just take them outside probably to do that rather than setting off all your smoke alarms if you've got sensitive ones in the house. Um, and frankincense is another great one for doing that, I believe. 
frankincense resins on charcoal discs but again i have to do that outside because it smokes like a beastie in my house and then we have the number cards illustrated or unillustrated so this is a very good definition so you've got the marseille next to the the lima i think this looks like yep i'm pretty sure that's the lima tarot and then you've got your marseille yeah it says it right there why didn't you tell me and you've got your marseilles um and that's a really great way of um just having a look so that should be the three of wands there and there's a three of wands two of cups versus the two of cups three of pentacles yep six of pentacles with your nine nine of cups i don't know where eight of swords is because that's wands usually anyway anyway who's splitting hairs and then we come through to the back and we've got the glossary again i wonder what's going to happen when we get to z of the glossary i'm quite intrigued to see how else they uh what else comes at the back here what other bits of wisdom and information are they going to include so there you go that is episodes six and seven and then should we zoom in a little bit and have a look at this deck Take out the spare cards because we don't really need those. I think it makes sense to do this. I know some of you are quite interested to see what comes in it. So, a bit more. Hopefully that's okay for you. So we'll just go through quickly. Um, you can see what they say, so I don't think I need to tell you what they are. Really gentle colourway in this, I think. Don't, it's, uh, it's quite neutral. It's very easy on the eye. It's so not my normal deck colours. But I actually quite like it. It's very um, ornate and pretty. I probably prefer this to the Sporza. I maybe even prefer this to the Golden Art Nouveau. That's a nice different take on strength. There's no lion, just double-headed dragon. Again, there are some really nice differences of images. So we've almost got like a fool of such dancing with death. Oh, that's good. Try and see all the detail I like. Well, that is good. I like that. I need to spend a bit more time with this deck myself. Have a really good look into the images and appreciate them. It has a very gentle feel to it. Very gentle. That in itself, for me to be saying that, is quite amazing. Um, very rare that I get definite feelings on decks. That's such an early kind of look and walkthrough. I normally have to work with them for quite a while. And even then, um, I don't have... Sorry, they're sticking. I don't have um, definite feels for decks. Like, I can usually use a deck for anything. So this is interesting. This is really interesting. This is new territory for me, guys, that you're witnessing today. I don't know that I've seen many people work with this deck as well. Um, it's not one I see regularly on Tarot Tube, at least. I'm wondering, do the borders bother me? I don't think they do. I don't think they do, but these cards seem so obvious with what they are, I could be tempted to take the white borders off completely. I 
and can you see the images inside the pentacles or coins are changing that's interesting I wonder what the difference is as we go through with the images inside so he's got a head he's got a face she has a flower and let's see what the king has flower too so that makes me wonder if the flower is more significant in meaning look at our wands we've got some foxgloves or something foxgloves or french bluebells maybe foxgloves Oh no, we are going with the actual wood. Yeah, I guess you're wondering what I was going on about. I thought they were using the wild flowers in the cards um, as a representation. I'm quite liking the way they're using an image and then they're just popping the symbol that we might know a bit more of above rather than incorporating it always in the card I quite like that because you can see like the rush of urgency like chasing after you to tell you something because as we know this is usually the messenger card so it's it sort of in there um, but whether it's good or bad or whether you're turning your back on it and walking away from the message is um i guess something to be decided as uh, i get to work with the deck so the colours are really ornate and sort of um, well-toned, muted, matched. There's definitely none of the brightness from the Tower of the She in here. Or the Mary L. Or the Twilight. Or the Haunted House. <laughs> That's made of the very muted looking deck. Um, that is the Dark Grimoire. I find that one quite muted in tonal. It's just sparks of bright orange. And there's our King of Swords. He's not quite what I was expecting for a King of Swords. He, he feels like somebody else. He feels like he should be the Green Man or something. Um, he has a very summery feel about him to me. So I wonder if swords represent summer in this deck, but he definitely has a summery feel to me. And you so does King of Pentacles. But more hotter climate. This feels a bit more British climate. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So there you go. That's the Harmonious Tarot from Low Scarabeo. And the backs are gorgeous as well. Um, with parts five and six okay well i hope you enjoyed that um let me know in comments what you think what's your favorite and i'll see you in the next one bye, -bye.